You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Welcome to the Packernet Podcast. This is generally hosted by Ryan. Ryan couldn't make it today. Instead, he decided he wanted his ratings to take a tank. And so uh, he's invited myself, uh, Matt Larson, up in Oak Bank, Manitoba, Canada. And of course, as always, uh, Bruce Edmonds down in El Paso, Texas. We're from Packers Without Borders. And uh, we will be your co host today. How you doing, Bruce? What's up? Hazel with my basil. <laughs> Ah, three glasses of wine and, and all the gang signs come flashing. We're getting we're getting a little bit loopy. And you know, we have to get <laughs> sophisticated today. Sophisticated. I degraduated the sixth grade. Listen, uh, 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 Ryan asked us uh, to do this uh, for him, and it's uh, quite the honor. Apparently, um, we uh, he couldn't get JJ. Uh, JJ is currently being sequestered in Aaron Rodgers' inner circle. Really? Because I heard that he tested negative for content. Oh, <laughs> I heard he was uh, blaming a uh, skunk for a bag of weed in his basement. That's what I heard. No, you know, <laughs> see, that's false. That's fake news. I heard that he was getting his beard permed. Oh, oh, it does need maybe just a little, <laughs> a, little perming. a little bit. Yeah, it's a little perming. Just a little perming. Matches the microphone. Yeah, no color. So, yeah. So, <laughs> so I heard he was going to get Matt Ramage, but apparently they couldn't see eye to eye. No, oh. you know, I heard that, that, that Matt was seeing someone on the sides. Oh, man. Shot across the bow. Matt, I didn't mean to. Listen, Bruce has my dog hostage, and he's making me say these things. So we're going to, uh, <laughs> we're going to talk, of course, about this little team, the Green Bay Packers. And uh, we're going to talk about the uh, NFL playoffs, uh, a little bit of dad stuff that we like to do, a little bit of the not a sponsor and some of the jokes and gags that we do um, bring a little spice to your life. Uh, don't forget, we are uh, originally from Packers Without Borders. Please don't hold us against that. Hold, hold that uh, against JJ and, uh, and Matt. Matt. Yeah, to heck with those guys. So uh, this has to be G-rated. So uh, Bruce is going to be uh, watching his P's and Q's. Here we go. I struggle. Uh, some of the news that came out uh, recently, uh, of course, his offensive coordinator, uh, Nathan Hackett, has been uh, signed, sealed, and delivered to Denver as the head coach. And now we'll just let the speculism, all the all the floodlines of headlines. Wait, wait. Is speculism a word? I thought it was speculation, but speculism works. I like I speculism it. myself. Yeah, I mean, speculism is much, it, it's much more socially active. Perpetuating the perpetuitude of perpetuations. It is terrible. I, I mean, as you know, as Packer fans, you would know. There's always this, this sort of like gathering tumbleweed or, you know, if you look back behind you, it's like Raiders of the Lost Ark and that big boulders coming at you. And it's always some type of drama filled basket of goodies that is attached to Aaron Rodgers. And now, of course, Nathan Hackett, who, who rightfully so, uh, he's a fantastic offensive coordinator. We're going to miss him. I mean, this guy, fantastic, right? I, he's given us well two deserved. years. Yeah, oh, and it's about well, time, right? Well, you know, a lot of with Hackett that people need to understand, this was handpicked when Matt LaFleur was picked and we all kind of rolled our eyes and didn't understand what was going on. This is who ch he chose as his offensive coordinator. And to be fair to him, it's it's been a great rise for him so quickly within the organization now have an opportunity as a head coach. But when you take a team to 39 and nine, three yeah. straight playoff appearances, two NFC championship games back to back. And then this last game, which I, I really don't feel like talking about because we're talking about Hackett, but well-deserved and it's going to be, I'm going to be sad to see him go. And you know, what's going to happen is more than likely what he's going to end up doing. And Tom Pelissero mentioned this today when he was talking to Dan Patrick, that he's already eyeing, um, one of our potential replacements that we want to promote from within. So we might be losing line. two of these guys. Yep. We might be losing two of these guys to the Denver Stenovich. Packers. Sten Sten Stenovich. And, you know, we can't lose him. If we're going to lose anybody, it can't be 
did the O line coach. Look what he did with that O line this year. It's been patchwork, and whoever they put into whatever spots, they seem to be doing outstanding. We played, you know, ninety percent of the season on third wheels, you know, and and Aaron was still upright, made it through the season fairly healthy. I, I think Stanovich is the guy that we, we have to, without a doubt, keep, and he is the assistant to the offensive coordinator. He would be a natural selection, of course, to uh, move up to uh, an offensive coordinator position and, you know, maybe uh, uh, Hackett, uh, maybe he doesn't want to go to Denver. Maybe he wants to stick around, you know, these are the, the other side of this coin too. And you and I were talking about this earlier is Aaron Rodgers wants a lot of say in, in who goes and who stays. And if we remember his quarterback coach had left uh, a couple, two, three years ago, and, and they were, he was really upset about something uh, with that guy leaving. And uh here, here's a tough conundrum now for uh, Goot and for, um, you know, Mark Murphy and for Lafleur because these other teams are firing away and grabbing coaches. And you've got to wonder if uh, Goot, Murphy, and Lafleur are thinking, do we keep Stenovich or do we keep, you know, uh, uh, the other guy? Like, who, who would make Rogers happy? And then the other side of it, too, is, is it maybe in March, Rogers says, forget it, I'm not coming back. I'm going to retire. And... And now it's you got to keep the guy you wanted to keep. It's wow. Well, the decision's going to be made prior to that, right? And as much as he's going to have a say in terms of who, what coach he wants to keep and whatnot, that that's the one thing that I took from the Tom Pelissero is the talking heads have a habit of making things like this is happening. It's a fact. Hold on. There's the offensive coordinator position open for the Green Bay Packers with Aaron Rodgers still attached to the team, with Devontae Adams still attached to the team. I understand there's a lot of cloud going around or a, a dark cloud kind of starting to form but that dark cloud is not inside the organization it's all this speculation and you know jj's sequestered right now trying to get us some information to let us know exactly what's going to happen prior to but at this point it's all speculation nobody knows anything and i think that the packers job is much more attractive than the denver broncos job just just a yeah. thought yeah yeah well, of course. Right. Of course. And of course, we had uh, Jordan uh, Schultz, the uh, quote unquote blue checkmarked uh, reporter uh, reporting that uh, Green, uh, the Denver Broncos were going to grab Hackett. They were going to grab uh, Stenovich and they're grabbing uh, Rogers and they're grabbing Adams. And, you know, I, I have a hard time. This is the thing. OK, you're going to sell the future, your next two, three, possibly even four years worth the first and second round draft picks to get your hands on Rogers. That's because he, he's not going to leave for one draft. We're not getting rid of him for one draft pick, no matter, nope. he, he, no matter how much he begs or if Shailene's mom calls in and says, please let him go. It won't matter. We, he can, he can generate, you know, a, a, three, four first round picks or two, three first round picks and a whole bunch of second round picks. And then you have Adams who you're going to add to that, who then is going to take, you're going to lose all your first and second round picks for the next five years. Don't forget too, Adams isn't entirely interested in the championship so much as he's more interested in getting paid this year. And rightfully so he's, he's the number one right receiver in the league as far as anyone's concerned best route runner i think i've ever seen so you're going to give up 60 million dollars in cap this year and you're going to get rid of the next five years of draft picks for rogers who may only play one year and then retire and let's be clear with this as well it's not well i think if he's traded there is going to be he's he wants to play another four years the retirement thing i believe he will stay if he wants to retire um, because he'll want to retire a Packer. So the way that I look at this in terms of the value of Rogers to other teams, the media has a tendency to focus on one team because something happened. And they, just like you said, that tumble weed starts picking things up and the ball gets bigger. It's like a snowball. It's like an avalanche, right? You're in Manitoba. You're at minus 42 degrees. You know what snow is. I don't, I know tumble weeds, you know, snow, but the biggest <laughs> thing here. The biggest thing here is that there's going to be competition for Rodgers if we are really going to trade him. It's not just going to be Denver. It's going yeah. to be the Raiders. Look, Miami the has Look the, the most money. The Saints. There's yeah. a lot of teams. I, I don't think we would trade him to somebody in the NFC. Um, Me neither. I don't 
don't think we would trade him to somebody that we would even see over the next three or four years. So it would be somebody that we may have even played this year, like Pittsburgh. Right. Exactly. So there's a lot of competition. Then so we wouldn't expecting... have to see him for four years. Exactly. And, and and you think about just the opportunity that lies ahead. And again, Packer fans, I think, are not as divided as they were in the offseason. I just I, I happened to put something out on Twitter in terms of, you know, if, if Aaron Rodgers went to the Denver Packers, would you stay or would you go? Right. Would you stay or would you go now? Da, 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 da. If you got it, we'll be trouble. Hey, hey. is there any singing? If I got it, we'll be double. But is Ryan ever singing? I don't think so. Okay, this is culture. Culture. Classics. Classics. But interestingly enough, with the competition and everything going on outside of the organization and and Rogers possibly retiring or going somewhere else, I, I think that that's that has helped solidify the fan base now with everything being attacked where we're starting to become a collective group again, where Packers fans, when we get attacked, it, we start getting close together again. We get close knit. And of course you have your, your morons. Um, can I say that on the air? I don't know. Um, at it's, least on this podcast. It's Ryan. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, Ryan I don't know. show. It's, where you have people that are going to follow Rogers and leave the Packers, but that's not a Packer fan, Packer fans, people that are blue, you know, just blue blooded since you were born older generation or people that grew up loving the Packers and, and know something prior to Favre or prior to Rogers specifically have really melded together after all of everything that we went through and defending Rogers, don't don't care about his political views. I really don't. We're talking about Aaron Rodgers, the football player who's back to back MVP that deserves to go wherever he wants to go. He wants to be with the Green Bay Packers. Within Packer reason. Team. Within reason. I well, mean, if he said, but you know what if he I said mean. trade me, trade me to Chicago, we'd be like, there's no bloody way. <laughs> Well, he owns them already, so it doesn't. That's not an option. Op- can you be an owner player? I mean, Jerry Jerry Jones would be like, like to slap do that. shot. Be like yeah. slap shot. Remember Paul Newman slap shot? Mm. <laughs> Great movie. But what I'm getting at is, yeah, very polarizing. But ultimately, yeah. the decision is going to come down to Rogers, and I think the Packers have done a good enough job laying the groundwork to have him come back to the Packers, and. Offensive coordinator or not, as much as he might have a conversation now, which is, I think, what was happening before is he was always shut out of these rooms. I think now he's in the conversations, not necessarily telling them what to do, but understanding what's going to come and what's going to not come so he can make his decision because he's going to say, I'm staying. Let's rework my contract, which is a big component, right, of what we're looking at with whether Rodgers comes or stays, because if he doesn't rework his contract, this is a moot point that we're talking about. Um, well- Here's a question then for you. If he's sitting yeah. in those rooms, you know, he's in there sequestered with JJ mm-hmm. and, and, and they're discussing coaching and stuff. Do you think he's saying, Hey, you know what? Special teams coach Mo should stick around. He should get another chance. You think he's saying that? No, because as much as the players defend to, defended Mo and I saw a lot of tweets defending him and say, we needed to perform him for him. That's fine. But the job of a coach is to make your players perform. Right. I understand that as a player, they're adults, they're professionals, and they're kind of putting it on themselves, trying to kind of deflect that away from him. But he didn't do his job. But MLF is the final word. And I think the relationship between Rogers and now and MLF is strong enough now to where that conversation can be had. And regardless of what he decides to do, Rogers will probably be good with it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Will will you be good with it? Well, you, I know, I, and let me tell you, I would not be good with it. And it's nothing personal against Mo. Um, I think uh, after week three, there was an issue. I think after the week seven game, there was another issue. And then after week eight, it should have been three strikes. I'm sorry. This is the NFL. It stands for not for long. When guys are performing like this, you've got 10 guys on the field to try and block a field goal. You, you don't have enough guys blocking on one side of the line your gaps and your spaces are too wide. You don't have anything covering. Yeah. You've got, Oh, it, it just. 10, 10 players 
the game on ending the field, the season the ending play. Yeah, what are you? Season ending. Ending. But then again, yeah. at the same time, if that's happening, okay, let, let's just, I, I just, this just kind of boo, came into my mind. He's the special team comes. Who's the head coach. You're telling me the head coach didn't count 10 people on that. Well, and that's, that's another thing too. If you've ever played football and I know it, like when we played, right, you had the special teams captain and he would stand out there and he'd go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I'm 11. Okay. We're good. Right. And then on the sidelines, we had the special teams coach going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay. We're good. And then the defensive coordinator, we would, I would be standing there going one, two, three, four, five. So it was counted by a lot of guys. And I would have to imagine in the NFL, that they have a few other staff members whose sole purpose is to make sure that we have 10, uh, you know, 11 guys on the field and not 10. And this has happened multiple times to Mo. Like, and you feel bad because apparently he's a great guy, but listen, it, it, we, uh, business is business. Look, <laughs> business is business, this is, man. This, this is the reality of things. Business. And the yeah. NFL is a business. Business is yeah. business. I could love you to death. And that's that's a lot of where we are with this. And Rodgers might have a say with it. He he might come. He might go. And we're Packers fans. But well, ultimately. It, and, I mean, you know, what really what's really upsetting is, is we have to use a lot of our starters to help compensate for the special teams. I mean, that's when A.J. AJ Dillon got hurt, was on a – on, on bloody special teams. What is a starter doing on special teams? We have 53 players. That's 22 starters. So we should have 31 other guys standing around. Why aren't those guys running special teams? I see other teams not using all of their starters. Well, Maybe they got one or two out there, but we, I mean, we've, we've got basically our entire, you know, first stringers out there short of Rogers playing on special teams. You want some salt in the wound, and it pissed oh. me off. Really oh. irritated me. Was the Forty Can you say? Can you say, can you say piss, pissed off on Ryan? Yeah, piss is okay. when you go to the restroom. Okay, um, all right. Yeah. What really got me was that the Forty Nine. I just man, I'm trying so hard to not. Man, this is harder than I thought. We're trying, right? Yeah. Because uh, honestly, we don't want to lose uh, any listeners for. Uh, Pack Daddy Ryan. and uh, yeah. Ryan, and He's a good uh, guy. you know, we hope we can fumble our way through this, and uh, maybe occasionally you you might turn on our podcast every now and then. That would be but, nice too. But the 49ers having the thirtieth ranked special teams, of course, we were thirty two, yeah. right? Oh, outperformed ours, and here's what they said was the key that they made it a point to put starters in their special teams unit to play against the Packers so they could definitely win that phase of the game. And look what happened. Our offense, I'm very frustrated with people saying, well, we only put up 10 points. You know what? Shut up. Shut up. Can because you say you know that? What? Careful, yes. dude. Shut up. I'm just, <laughs> I'm fed up. I'm fed up with the excuse that we only put up 10 points because you know what? Their, their offense put up six points to our seven points. So that's, we won on offense, regardless of how you want to criticize. And I understand that Rogers played poorly, but guess what? And a lot of it, and I feel so sorry for big dog. And I know he's coming back and he's still under contract and it's not going to cost us very much. He's not going to want to end his note on a fumble in the NFC championship game. So I know he's going to be back, but divisional it, game I, it, or the divisional game. God bless America. I know, um, right. The last two, the last three years have just been hard. Right? It's been, it, it's been hard. hard. It's been hard, but yeah. It's it's, it's like watching those... that ex cheat on you over and over and over again, isn't it? it? It's just like looking through the window. Why? Why? <laughs> but I forgive you. All right. Come back next season. <laughs> yeah. But doing those types of things is where the chatter yeah. starts about special teams and starters. But guess what? Who are we going to put on? I mean, who yeah. are we going to put on there? You're not going to risk Preston. Zadarius, Gary, Jair, Stokes. And, and look, Stokes played some special team snaps in that game. So it wasn't even the special teams. I understand that the, the, the field position, why are we going down this road? You know what? Let's I don't stop know. talking you know what? about Let's it. Stop. Let's stop. Let's stop. Because right you know what? Now. It's over. It's over. You know what? You know what else is going to happen here? What's Let's talk happen? about the uh, rest of the playoffs here. We've got uh, oh, the, the football Bengals. we don't care about. The football we don't well, care about. You know what? I, I, I'm a little invested in this. I want to see the Bengals win. I think 
if the Bengals, I think if Joe Burrow had an offensive line, he would be undefeated. That's what I think. But he doesn't have an offensive line. He has a, a wet paper bag for a front for a front five that just they can't hold water. They couldn't stop a nosebleed. Nine are, sacks, and they oh. still won nine sacks. Now listen, Tennessee's got arguably one of the best front four in all, and they've got a fantastic. I mean, Tennessee's defense is pretty good. They're pretty good. Yeah. They play pretty good defense in Tennessee. But let me tell you, <laughs> Kansas City can put up points. And this is what the Bengals have to be able to do is limit those points, frustrate Kansas City, limit those points, sort of like what Pittsburgh was doing in that first quarter against that game until all of a sudden everything just all heck broke loose and they weren't keeping contained and that was it, right? But, you know, the Bengals, they've got a pretty good, they've got a pretty good defense. And you know what, Miller – playing for uh, – he's a linebacker for the Bengals there, and he's all over the place. And if they come out like they did against Tennessee where the defense came out to play and they come out hitting and they come out playing physical like that, I don't I don't think Kansas City can get the job done. I don't. I think the Bengals are going to – now let me tell you too, this is also uh, NFL fact, okay? The Cincinnati Bengals have never lost an AFC championship game in their entire history. They've only ever been to one, but they never lost that game. So I'm picking the Bengals. I'm taking the Bengals. You ready for this one? Uh -oh. 20, 27, 20. 2,027 points to 20? 27 points to 20. I think... The Bengals win this one. It'll be bloody heck in the first half, and then the skies will open up for everybody in the second. But Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase are going to show everybody exactly why they're right up there with Rodgers and Adams. I know you think something different is going to happen. So my heart tells me Cincinnati, and you know I picked them last week, and I really want yeah. them to take it all the way. Here's, here's my concern. KC – is one of those teams, and specifically Pat Mahomes, who we've seen look like Aaron Rodgers in 2018, 2019, throwing off a platform of missing guys. So if they can fluster him initially, there might be a chance for, for, for the Bengals to be able to slow them down enough to not have them score 30 points, right? To have Casey not score 30 points on them. And if they keep them under 30, I have a feeling they've got a very good shot at winning. The problem is that the Kansas City defense over the last few weeks – is not the Kansas City defense that we've seen in the past. They're playing lights out, and that might be the deciding factor as opposed to Pat Mahomes, who, you know, he invented the no-look pass. He invented oh, the nobody ever did that before throws. Him. Nobody oh, did that before him. No, the, the, sh the, the shuffle pass or the underhanded throws, I never, I've never seen those in my life until now. But yeah, the only reason, air raid offense, Texas Tech, five wide, He's used to that system, which is a lot of what they run with the cheetah who you saw, you just put it in his hands. And you know what? I'm really upset at the cheetah. I'm actually upset at the NFL because our boy Aaron Jones waved bye-bye to the Cowboys a couple of years ago and got fined for taunting. All of a sudden taunting is not a thing. And he did taunt them into the end zone. And you know what? That dude is fast. That that's the reality of things. And between him and Travis Kelsey, the connection in the mind meld that those three guys have between Kelsey Hill and and Mahomes is I think going to be enough to where they're just not going to be able to stop all of them and either Kelsey's going to have a huge game huge game or Hill's going to have a huge game it's not going to be the Hardmans and all these other guys and all these ancillary pieces that they have it's not going to be CEH you know in the running the, the ball it's going to be Pat Mahomes putting this team on his shoulders he usually does and it's all going to depend on him but I think they're I don't think that Cincinnati has enough of a defense to stop them from getting 30 points. And I've got the Kansas city chiefs 35 to 24. And you know, what's funny is, is everybody thought uh, Derek Henry was going to run for a hundred yards against Cincinnati and he didn't get close. So, uh, you know, I guess, I guess we're going to find out this is why they play the games, right? Damn straight. The other side of the ball, the other side of the ball here, we've got uh, 49ers at Rams. Uh, this is going to be good. This this one I think is going to be good because you've got uh, uh, McVeigh and Shanahan, you know, head to head. 
you got Stafford against Jimmy G. You've got the defense versus the omittents. You've got Akers and his buddy Butterfingers against, you know, the 49ers, fairly stingy defense. I'm taking the 49ers, and the whole reason I'm taking the 49ers is so that the Cincinnati Bengals can meet them in the Super Bowl and kick their butt from 1988. Revenge tour. You couldn't write this any better. This is the reckoning. The NFL, that, this is the reckoning that Aaron is. Oh my! About. We figured it out. Oh, there we it is. We gotta write this down. We gotta tweet this out. This is the reckoning. The Bengals are gonna let the 49ers no, don't tweet it out. know. Don't tweet it out. Let Pack Daddy okay. have that nugget. Yeah. That's All a beautiful right. nugget. Right. Yeah. You know what? That's Pulitzer gold. That's right for there. you, Ryan. You that was that. for you. Okay. We're square. <laughs> We're square now. I think, though, this is what I – well, this is what I want to see. I don't know about I think, but this is what I want to see. I want to see the 49ers and the Bengals in the Super Bowl and the Bengals just absolutely trash them and uh, get that monkey off their back. 1988, I mean, you got to feel – you got to feel for these guys. You know, like I had mentioned, I got a buddy of mine, 1990, he got a Bengals tattoo. I mean, it's been a long 32 years for my brother here. Yeah, it, it, it gotta pull it's, one out. What, it's got 97 stripes on it now. <laughs> oh. It's 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 got one stripe, but because of the wrinkles, it looks like exactly exactly stripes. exactly. <laughs> That's the reference right there. You oh, can tell yeah. your brother. Uh, there goes look now. Now we're I, down I, to I six th- listeners. I threw up. <laughs> I threw up in my mouth a little bit when you said 49ers Rams because those are two teams we beat. We actually beat. Yeah. You know. <sighs> We beat three of the four teams right now in the NFC Championship We beat game. Kansas City. I don't we, care what you say. If we had Aaron Rodgers in that game, we beat Kansas City. Yeah, so, I mean, so we beat Love. the four. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. we beat the four teams that yeah. are in the NFC Championship game. And once again, we pooped the bed when yeah. it mattered for whatever reason. But I'm going Rams, and here's why. I trust the 49ers running game, especially with Debo. I don't think they're going to be with, – without the weather, I don't think that the, the, the Rams are going to be able to limit the running game for the 49ers. But I don't think Jimmy G, who threw for what you predicted, was less than 150 yards against us. Yeah. Th- this Rams defense with I, Donald in that front – is going to get after him and the flush worst part, for him. The what? worst part, I know I'm yeah, taking buddy. a sidebar. Do it. Sidebar here. But the worst part is, is I successfully predicted that they would do exactly what they did on offense, but I did not predict that we were only going to score 10 points and lose that yeah. game. That's the yeah. worst part, is they did exactly what I thought that they were capable of doing, and we couldn't get the car started. But, okay, and, so you're taking I think the Rams. That's gonna- I think that's going to happen again, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that Matthew Stafford, who we've seen for a very long time and we know is a very good quarterback, finally had an opportunity to get out of an organization that was, quite honestly, a cluster, right? I mean, it looks like now they've always played us tough, but they played us tough because Matthew Stafford is a better quarterback than people will give credit for. I think he deserves to go to the Super Bowl after being in lion's hell his entire career. And now he's with the Rams with the chance to go to the Super Bowl to prove that he's the quarterback that we've seen who has always taken us to the brink, right? And and on top of that, the defense that the Rams have, Garoppolo, as cute as he is, is not going to be able to get it done. And I think the Rams pull this off, man. It's going to be a very close game. Obviously, they're division rivals. It's like us playing the Vikings or the Bears in a championship game, right? I mean, this is division rivals that know each other very well, so it's going to be a close game. But I think the Rams are going to pull it off. And I think it's going to be 31-24. 31-24. Wow. Okay. I think it's going to be lower scoring. I think it's going to be in that uh, 14, 17, something like that. Uh, The, you know, the first round of the playoffs is always kind of like a hit and miss. You might get a good game in there. The second round is always the best round of the playoffs because everybody knows everybody so well, but now we're in a unique position here where 
Cincinnati, Kansas City, they played earlier, right? They, they, they've they seen this. The blood is still, you know, fresh. And then on the other side of the ball, San Francisco and the Rams, I mean, she's within walking distance. You know what I mean? These guys, these are natural rivals, you know? And uh, I'm thinking, yeah, I, I think 17, 14, something of that nature. That's what I think. Okay. Well, you know what? Ryan usually takes a break right about now. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about hashtag actual sponsors because he's a legit podcast. And I'm going to talk a little bit about Adam with Modern Frontier, man. So if it's meat the way you like it, it's in portions too large to consume unless you're a Catholic like me and have 63 kids, right? I mean, what more can you ask for? Large quantities of good meat at a good price right now use promo code meatpacker all one word all caps and they'll give you 25 dollars off of your first order that's 75 cents canadian for everybody out there um but just go to modern frontier a modern frontier meets with adam go check him out really good dude supporting supporting ryan on this podcast we had to give him a little shout out here I want to tell you guys real quick about our new sponsor, Factor. Factor makes delicious, ready-to-eat meals, and they get sent right to your door. They have 35 different options every single week that you can choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. There's no prep work. There's no messing up six different bowls, mixing stuff. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. No prep, no cook, no cleanup. Factor is also very flexible with your schedule. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing between 6 to 18 meals per week. You can also pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved. So head to factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 and use code packdaddy50 to get 50% off. That's code packdaddy50 at factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 to get 50% off. Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard in your entire life of test driving a phone network? Well, now you have, because U.S. Cellular is going to let you test drive their network for free for 30 days. So anywhere you go where you got some dead spots, where your service isn't super strong, you're trying to listen to the podcast and it drops out when you go here because you got no internet service anymore, real simple. Just whip out your phone, do a little beep boop bop boop, that's you pushing the buttons to go to the right place, and you can get the app and try it out for yourself. So go ahead and test drive U.S. Cellular's award-winning network free for 30 days. That's U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply, awards based on open signal independent data. So go to uscellular.com for all the details. All right, let's do hashtags not a sponsor. Hashtag not a sponsor. Brought to you by the good guys at Maytag. Need a washer? Need it soon? Maytag. Hashtag not a sponsor. Which one you want to do? So I'll do full sale. That sounds um, good. And, it, and then you can do whichever one you want. All right, ready? Sounds good, brother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so where am I going to start? So just, I, I did that thing. Do you want me to just start off with the not sponsor stuff? So I'll, I'll just start saying something about the, we don't, we're not big enough for sponsors. Hi, I'm Troy McClure. You may recognize me from such commercials as. That's later. That's later. Matt's, Matt's GoFundMe page and Bruce's vasectomy. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm not out chasing down hooligans in my Batmobile. <laughs> Okay, do it, man. Fail full right. sale. Do it. Rip it. Right. You know what? You know what, Matt? We're what? not big enough. We're not big enough for sponsors yet, but we've got a little thing called the hashtag not a sponsor. And it's a little hashtag not a sponsor shout out to our boys at Full Sail Brewing up in Oregon. 
You know why? Because when you love cold goodness that doesn't get shipped to your local liquor store that you've been drinking your entire life, you reach out to them and Sandra, the goddess Sandra, you know what she does? She calls a distributor, orders you four cases and has them shipped to the local store by your house so you can have them in your local area. Hashtag not a sponsor. I love you, Full Sail Brewing. Become a sponsor. Holy smokes. See, that's that's Bruce for you. Eh? He's, you know, hashtag not a sponsor. I'm going to go with Rolex. Rolex. When you want to wear something that's worth more than your house, Rolex. Rolex. When time on your phone just isn't good enough, surrounded by diamonds, Rolex. Hashtag not a sponsor. I'd love a new Rolex. Let me tell you. <laughs> I'll take a I'll take a Rolex. I'll also take a Frolex. Oh man, I'll take a Timex. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a Casio calculator. Remember those little calculators? Oh man, those were the greatest. I was you always looked like the smartest kid in the room until you were desperately trying to touch those buttons during a math exam. Do you remember that? It was oh, impossible. And then the, the younger stupid crowd, calculators. Right? The TI calculator, oh. when that sucker came out, which had 97 oh. buttons, and the only ones yeah. I knew how to use were plus, minus, yeah. divide, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and equals. That's what did half those buttons? I remember one time I was in like an advanced math class. There was like a mix up clearly at the high school. Okay. And they put me in the advanced math class. And I remember sitting there like halfway through the first class and they were going over what those buttons meant and co-signment. And they used all these big 50 cent words. And I remember it was Miss Lethbridge was the math teacher. And she said, Matthew, you look a little lost. Are you okay? And I said, ma'am. And she said, yes. I said, I need to get the heck out of here. (laughs) And I went to to business math is where I went. (laughs) How is that possible? Your name starts with math. And you know nothing about math. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, you know what? I've never had to find out, you know, <laughs> Mike, because we're doing the online. Okay. So part of our yeah. podcast, right? We talk about being dads. I have a, uh, you know, 15 year old daughter. I have 11 year old son. Uh, Bruce has got 64 children. I believe they yep. range they, all the way from 16 down to like three months or something. It's just yeah, but I've thrown that. I've only. I've thrown out a majority of them right now. I'm only down to a 15, a 12 and a 10 year old. Okay. So he's got three. So girls, uh, girls, of course. Oh, yeah, right. So uh, of course uh, up here in Canada, the uh, COVID restrictions, we had uh, our schools shut down for a little bit longer. And uh, so they shut down after Christmas break and they were doing online learning. And I thought, you know what? I'm off and I've got some time. I'm going to sit down with my son and I'll join him in his zoom classes and his, his team's meetings and stuff. And we'll do, you know, grade six math. This will be fantastic. I'll show him what a smart guy I am. Listen, I was Googling. Okay. I remember, I remember sitting and I had to mute our microphone so I could do things like, okay, Google, what does obtuse angle mean? <laughs> Is that the I big would, one or the small one? Yeah. Which one? What the heck? And then we did ELA, right? Language arts, right? And, and the teacher was like, okay, so we're going to find the acronym in this sentence. And I was like, mute. Okay, Google, what does acronym mean? And my son was just looking at me like, oh, how, how are you in charge? <laughs> how are you, my dad? You, you know what, buddy, you know what I'm dealing with right now? I, I'm about to have a heart attack because oh. apparently my, my, my middle one, who is yeah. the most sensitive of all the three girls, right? She is okay. the most open, emotional, explosive, lots of love, lots of hate, kind of regulates the, the, the temperature of the house based on how she is that day, sure. right? Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that's yeah. right. Oh, yeah. Um, other than my wife, of course, who regulates the temperature in the house all the time. <laughs> but, yeah. but number two on the list is my middle one. And I, my concern for her is that I know she's going to get her heart broken and I'm going to have to taser 97 kids because <laughs> she wears her heart on her sleeve and she just, she lets it like, it, there's no hiding. It's like, dude, just hide some of it. No, there's this boy that she's like, since they've been together since kindergarten, they kind of mutually like each other. And Uh-oh. she's now in her first year of middle school. Uh-oh. And apparently on Monday, Uh-oh. he felt like he had been mean to her 
and was worried that she was like offended uh, because he was in a bad mood or whatever. So he he wrote her a love note that I, oh, and, and no. I it, you know I texted this thing to you. Yeah. And basically it's apologizing for being mean, but then in there he puts because I love you and puts oh. a little heart. And my daughter comes home super happy, super excited, everything's wonderful and I'm just like, okay. Whitey tidy dad in the basement with the shotgun polishing is about to come out. And I can't do that because in this world day and age, you have to support your kids. So they, they open up to you and they tell you about these things, right? Like if, if I was doing something wrong, she would have hidden that little note. And then today, Matt, today she walks home with this huge smile. I had to pick her up from theater a little bit later. Cause she's in theater, you know, not theater class, yeah. but theater club. Um, and uh, she says, dad, he asked me to the Valentine's Day dance, and I was just, "Oh like, my what? god, yes, man!" Oh. <laughs> but uh. she said, "His dad said that we we're too young to date, and I know you told me that I'm too young to date." And I was like, "Yeah." And oh wait, I had you on the phone when I picked. Yeah, her yeah, up. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was trying say? to convince what her. I was trying say? to convince her that I was trying to convince her that, and this is what I've been trying to convince my 15 year old. I mean, they see right through it, but they said, "Listen." The law is you can't date till you're 30. That's that's just the law. I don't make these rules. These are the rules I have to abide by. And when I say 30, it's because I'm hoping for 16, <laughs> you know, 17, right? No choice. I mean, we all made the same mistakes and you have to go through these mistakes, right? I will tell you this though, and it is a little, it is a little biased, and I didn't really realize it until you know, it, yeah, I was on this side of the fence, right? But like my son tells me about this cute little girl that he likes and whatnot. And I'm kind of like, yay. And then my daughter's like, oh, and there's this guy. And I'm like, which guy? Point him out. Yep. <laughs> right. So you've got both sides. I've got, I've got the girls on my end. And my advice to any guy listening to this who has daughters, and I'm sure you do the same thing. But here's my advice to you is, as a father, the only thing you can do is set the example for your kids on what you expect them to go out in the world and find. And you're going to fight with them constantly. And my 15-year-old has been very difficult lately, just like every 15-year-old is, just like we were difficult. But you try to set an example because the only thing I can do with girls is show them an example to kind of compare against with somebody, you know, a dad at home who cares for them, who loves them, who takes care of them. Um, because that's what you want for them. Right. And, and they need to be able to at least recognize it. And my three rules, because you can't limit your kids in any way, because they're just going to push back as teenagers they are going to give you hell. And the more you push, the more they're going to push back because they're always testing limits. My three rules are these it's respect yourself, respect others and others respect you. If any of those three rules are broken, then we got a problem. And I've always stuck to that. So whatever I try to teach them, you know, in terms of just what we're, what we're discussing, if they do something wrong, which we know they screw up all the time, we screwed up all the time. It's, is it falling in one of my rule categories? Cause if so, because if you're, if you're out piercing your ear without permission, which is okay, I get it, whatever. Right. It's just, but you didn't ask me, you know, you're disrespecting me because you didn't ask me if a boy grabs your grabs you right inappropriately, He's disrespecting you. We got a problem right now. If you're dancing on a pole, you're disrespecting yourself. I don't know. I mean, that, it's, that's it. I, I'm going to, I'm going to be honest with you as a uh, father to a daughter. I have one job and that's to keep her off the pole. That's it. Right. Just keep her off the pole. So we've gone through the AFC, the NFC champions. We've gone through uh, Nathan Hackett, of course, uh, off to the Denver Broncos. And uh, who are we going to lose next? No. If we wait, lose wait, wait, wait. Not, the Dem- not the Denver Broncos. It's the Denver Packers, remember? Oh, the De- oh right. Yes, the Denver Packers, because they're going to try and take as many Hello. as we can. I did want to uh, 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 quickly, uh, of course, because... Uh, you know, this is Ryan's podcast and we are starting to run a little bit out of time here, but uh, you know what I want to, I kind of want to do another thing from uh, our podcast. We tend to uh, play a little bit of games and things like that, especially yep. if we have guests on and things. And, and so I've got, uh, I, I, we're going to use the uh, G P B. So the green bit. Oh, I guess that's backwards. That's unf- see on our show. I'm straight the green Packer based. 
So it's the Green Bay Packers, right? So it's GBP. Okay, so this is the first thing I want you to name five movies that start with the letter G. G? You Good fellas. Oh, okay, all right. Yes. Godsend. I just okay. made that up, but I bet you there's a movie called Godless. Godsend. Godless. 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 That's the one I was thinking, but no, that is it yeah. a movie or is it a series? Well, it's kind of a, yeah, I'll give it to it's you. It's a series. I'll give it okay. to you. Yeah. And yeah. It was close. Okay. I watched two and then I had to walk away. What How about, about uh, uh, what about Eric? Let me give you a hint. Uh, uh, Fredo. Fredo, you broke my heart, Fredo. Well, the Godfather is easy. I'm trying to go okay. a little bit oh, more obscure, oh. buddy. Goonies. Right. Goonies is oh, the greatest oh, movie of good. all time. Yes. There you go. Yes. And an, how many How many do I have? Three? That's four. four. That's four. Uh, four. How about Great Expectations? Great Expectations. That's great. You know what? We should have some listeners uh, join in uh, quickly. Uh, we'll let listeners, you can dial right in 1-800-JJ-Hearts-Ryan. And uh, we'll get you uh, right in the middle of the show. So that's hold on, hold on. We got somebody. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, hello, caller. Go ahead. Hi. How are you? Hi. <laughs> I'm Bruce Edmonds. You may remember me from such educational films as The Bears Still Suck and The Vikings Have a $35 million Paperweight at Quarterback. Ding. Well, I guess he hung call. up. I guess he hung that's up. A strange call. Didn't sound like you at all. It's no, such... not at all. It's so <laughs> weird. It. It's so weird. It's... Woo. So good. Name five... <laughs> Name five songs that start with the letter B. Five songs. B. Wow. Broken Patrick. wings. Broken, Broken wings. Broken wings. Broken wings. There you go. Broken wings. Broken wings. See, I'm trying to go obscure because there's a lot of stuff. Like you have Bad Bunny, but that's an artist, not a song. Yeah, Bad Bunny yeah. sucks and his tickets are like two grand. I much rather throw two thousand dollars on are 15 stalling black. For time? This is what yes. he does on yes. this is what he does on our $15, show. Too, he's I went, I went and, he can't think of and, he's and, got and, four and, and I never Google, B. I never cheat. I never cheat. No, I never no. cheat. B. The letter B. B. How about bring it on? I don't there know. There you go. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. right. No. What about uh, what about uh, uh, baby, baby, baby? Oh, by Justin Bieber. Baby, 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 where did I love? Oh my go? God! You're so. That, that I was thinking of <laughs> Justin Bieber. You're thinking no. Of Who? The Spooners, or what was the name of that band that you just named? <laughs> Come on, man. Our show is a little he's bit hard. Dude, B. 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 The Beautiful People. No, that's yeah, it starts with the Marilyn Manson. It's oh, the beautiful on. people. Da -na -na. Da -na -na -na. <laughs> <laughs> and how about uh, bye bye miss american pie no that's not even that that's just it? american pie i'm telling you yeah yeah, it's just a, yeah. It's gosh like, maybe b hard. is boston okay uh, that's a band boston's a band yeah what about band no bowling about... bowl, see bowling for soup had you said names of bands i think i can do it names of songs <laughs> is just like ridiculous, okay well dude. here you go oh here you go i got it Oh no, that starts. Don't stop believing. That starts. Damn it! Wow. I'm out. Next category. Next category. Okay. I'm done. Wow, that was fantastic. I'm so Name. glad that you. Hold on. I'm Name. so glad that you had five songs named with B. Give me now. You give me five songs. <laughs> no, I don't, exactly. Well, I don't have to. Move on to the next. Yeah. It's my game. You. Yeah. Okay. You win. You win. You. You won the first round. You lost the second round. Here's the tiebreaker okay. right here. Okay. okay. Here we go. Okay. So name five places in the world that start with the letter P. Paris, Prague, Pasadena, Pennsylvania. I did went state. I went cities and then state. <laughs> and then I'm going to go with Prussia. Like old Prussia. school, yeah. Russia. Remember, yeah. Remember Prussia, where it was like Europe and Russia, and it was like Prussia or Prasia. It was like this whole section. I don't know. Uh, I'm stalling. Poland. Uh, Poland. That was stalling. <laughs> there was you stalling. go. I'll give you that one. That was it. And then final, final question here. If you had a billion dollars now, straight up, one billion dollars, right? Just suddenly in your account, 
Okay. Mm-hmm. And you, you obviously you're going to move your family and everybody with you, or you're just going to, you know, ghost, right. Disappear, leave a big pile of cash. I don't think the wife would mind <laughs> really. <laughs> If you had a, if you had I a love billion my family. Dollars, I'd take my family. I, a billion or a million? That's a billion with a B, with a B. Okay. A billion, okay? Because money's not an issue. That's all I'm trying to establish here is sure. money's not Got an it. issue. Okay? Give me five bucks, I'm good. Where in the world would you move to? Uh, Costa Rica. Yeah, oh, Costa Rica, eh? I mean, that would be all right. Especially if you had a billion... Uh, Billion Americans, that would be good. You have the Pacific, you have the Caribbean, yeah. You have legalized uh, festivity things. Um, you can't say it on Ryan's show. You can't say marijuana no. on Ryan's show. <laughs> no. You'll get kicked out of the they Packernet have, podcast. They have, vol- not they the have like podcast. They have <laughs> volcanoes. Yeah, they have like beautiful beaches. I got yeah. married. You know, my my honeymoon was there. It yeah. was amazing. You yeah. can drive from one coast to the other in four hours. The real estate yeah. is cheap. I could just dump that in an annuity and live off of the interest. And and all I'll do is just like leave that in a family trust and just have all of the generations live off of the interest of that for the rest of my life. And that would be like, you can't touch this money, but you get the interest. As a family member of my of this billion dollars, and then I would just take care of every single person for the rest of all generations, not have some moron blow it. Wow. Wow, you've thought this through. You've I thought have. this through. I want to be a billionaire one day. I mean, one of I, these days, this podcast, you know what? Packers Without Borders is going to make us billionaires. I know it. Well, I do a little investing. Uh, every week, I invest in lottery tickets. And uh, sooner or later, one of those is going to pay off. Probably right close to like my 85th right. birthday. I won. Oh. Wait, my turn. My turn. Okay. All right. I did. I sent you a picture of my Spanish lesson. So we do Spanish lessons every once in a while, because just so you know, mi familia es de México, mi papá es de Escocia, pero mi mamá es de México. So we got a little bit of Mexican blood in me here, and I want to give you a little Spanish lesson. And I sent you a Spanish joke that I want you to read. Oh, man. And I'm not going to help you at all, buddy. Ready? Okay. Spanish lesson. Here we go. Okay. Le guía la mama escopa a la escuela li brincata. Am I even close? Am I even warm? Keep going. No, no don't. Hold on. Don't, no, don't, don't, don't ask. Just go through it. No, All right. commit. All right. All right. All right. As it, All right. I was a Spanish teacher. What I need you to do is I need you to say it with confidence and say it as if you were just talking to me. Don't stop. Okay. Just go. Okay. Do it. This is probably like this is probably this like is announce, this is announcing my love for Adele to the no, world in Spanish. This is much That's better than that. This is oh, much better than oh, that. Okay. A la mastra, como va la escuela? No, no, start. No, no, stop, stop. 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 I'm your teacher. Oh, start from oh, the okay. beginning with confidence. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Ready, set, go. Boom. La ga, <laughs> la, la, ga la mama escoba a la escuela. La pringata a la mastra, como ve estuvo a la escuela. Wala que nos que la mastra, pure body bien. Para vivir bien. <laughs> was that even, what did I just say? Right now, did I just give up, did I just give up my house to somebody in Mexico? Somebody in my, my, my Mexico may legally own my uh, property now. I love you so much. I have to read it. Okay, I'm going to read it properly. All right. right? And then, so double L is yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's the first thing. Yeah, so it's llega la mama. You see the little accent mark? So you, the little accent mark is you stress that letter. So llega la mama escoba. Escoba is a broom. Yeah. A la escuela. Y le pregunta a la maestra. So, Mama Broom yeah. goes to school and asks ask the teacher, how is Baby Broom? ¿Cómo va la escobita? How yeah. is Baby Broom doing at school? Right? Yeah. Y le contesta la maestra and the teacher answers, pues va re bien. Which means she's doing well 
but it also means it, she sweeps very well. So it's kind of like this little double meaning. So if you were Mexican or if you spoke Spanish, you'd understand it, but I'm just, uh, I'm, hmm. oh, oh, see it. He was worried it was going to be me. You were, yeah, let me tell you something, Ryan. Almost. Like, I did say Bruce did was say. giving me the old, listen now, Matt. <laughs> And I was like, I can do it. I can be G-rated. I, I, I'm an I can't. adult. I can't. I can, I can hang on to my lips. Okay, Packernet Podcast. This has been an absolute pleasure and an honor. I mean, to be asked to do something like this is huge. And uh, we hope that uh, you continue to listen and you don't hold this against Ryan. Hold it against JJ. Hold it against Matt Ramage. Don't hold it against Ryan. And uh, maybe... You know, if you've got some time, uh, turn the dial over to uh, Packers Without Borders podcast. I am uh, one of your co-hosts up here in Oak Bank, Manitoba, Canada, Matt Larson. And I am joined, as always, by my good buddy down in El Paso, Texas, Bruce Edmonds. Bruce, any last thoughts before we... Yeah, man. You know, Ryan's a good dude, man. You know, what I love about his podcast, and, and this is genuine coming from the heart, is now that we've tried to do this since since January, right? Father's Day, we launched, we did our stuff. It's not easy. And the part of it that's being hard is trying not to be like everybody else and trying to do your own thing. And Ryan, for now, you know, I've listened to him for now two years, um, every day, religiously, to be honest with you, because the dude does his job. He does his thing. He's only himself. He's not biased. I mean, he's a Packer fan, but he's unbiased. And that that brings a lot of different people, right? I mean, it's it I really appreciated him giving us this opportunity. We're we're a budding podcast. We're we're doing okay. We're not doing great. We're not doing Ryan numbers. He has like sponsors and stuff, but you know what? I mean, honestly, it's it's a lot of fun to come on here and do this. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the podcast today. And if you didn't, well then don't turn GG's the dial. Fault. Yeah, it, was JJ's JJ fault. And it was JJ and Matt's fault. Yeah. JJ, Blame make them. sure to tweet out what you heard about uh, Rogers from that inner circle that's growing by the day. Peace. Go Pack Go.